This conference will now be recorded. We began talking about adjusting entries last time. And this is a summary of adjusting entries. And we're working this week on adjusting entries one and two, prepaid expenses and unearned revenues. Next week, we, we will be into accrued liabilities and accrued expenses. And we said the purpose of adjusting entries is to match and ensure that all revenues are recorded in the correct period and all expenses related to that revenue is recorded. And so heretofore we've been making entries such as buying supplies, paying for prepaid insurance. Uh, and we had a transaction that occurred but transactions are also occurring internally as we use the supplies or as the insurance expires. As a result, as a result, we have to make another set of journal entries called adjusting journal entries. They are journal entries that have a debit and a credit. There are journal entries that have a debit and a credit. With prepaid expenses and unearned revenues, there's always a preceding entry that can or eventually will involve cash. So we, when we purchase supplies, we have a preceding entry where we debit supplies, and we credit cash or accounts payable. That's the preceding entry. As these supplies are used, and I just use supplies, but it could be prepaid insurance or equipment, anything. We've got to make an entry to, to because the supplies no longer exist, we got to debit the expense account and credit the asset account because if the supplies have been used up, or some of them have been used up, then the asset account is no longer correct and the ex expense account is not correct. Then we have unearned income where we have a preceding entry where we get cash, but we haven't earned the money, so it, it's in a liability account, unearned revenue. When the revenue is earned, then we make the adjusting entry, debiting the line building, crediting revenues. An adjusting entry, an adjusting entry never involves cash. It always involves one income statement account and one balance sheet account, but not cash. Okay, there is a trial balance. I mean, there's chart of accounts and I'll try to send this to you. On this chart of accounts, you know, just simply state what accounts are involved with which AJE. So for AJE1, supplies are involved, prepaid insurance are involved. Uh, Auto, where they accumulate depreciation on auto equipment, they accumulate depreciation on equipment. Those are the assets accounts that are involved in AJE1. The income statement accounts are depreciation expense, insurance expense, supplies expense. So I've just highlighted on this what the accounts are so you know the accounts. For AJE2, Unearned revenue is the balance sheet account. Sales is the revenue account. So I've just sort of indicated to you know, give you a little better focus. We know what the journal entries are, the accounts. We have to calculate the amounts. Are there any questions?
Is this sheet in the book or is it on Blackboard, sir? I'm going to put this on Blackboard. You know, this is a chart of accounts, uh, but I just did this special and I'm going to put it in the chart of account. I mean, in, I'm going to put it in uh, Blackboard with all the other information on adjusting journal entries. Okay. So I'm going to put it in there. I've just, all I did was to highlight accounts that are involved with these adjusting entries, but I will get that to you. Now, let's see where we are. The easiest adjusting entries involve unearned revenue. So the easiest ones involve unearned revenue. When the revenue comes in, we debit cash and credit unearned income. When we perform the services, we debit the unearned income and credit sales. So we have three journal entries that we're going to look at. 22, 23, and 24. 22, 23, and 24. So Daniel, I think you're up. So tell us about number 22. All right, so for the preceding entry, I have cash debited for 50,000, and then I have unearned revenue uh, credited for 50,000. Tell them why you did that. Tell them why you did that. I wish I knew myself, to be honest. Sir. To me, that's just an educated guess. Um, but it was a it was a type four transaction. And then for my adjusted entry, um, you get fifty thousand. Uh, I did uh, fifty times one thousand. Okay. So 50 customers paid a thousand each, so that's fifty thousand dollars. So we're gonna debit cash and credit earned income. That's a type four. And then what happened? And then for my adjusting entry, I debited unearned revenue for forty-five thousand since we only had nine hundred customers of the thousand. And then I debited. 45,000 for sales. So when we get the income, it's earner and it's a liability. But once we perform the work, how many customers picked up the gains? 900. 900. So you earn that $50. See, Daniel, this is a good business to be in because if these customers don't come to come, you still got the money. So it's good to have your money in advance. Are there any questions by anyone? What's our type for this unearned income and sales? Would it be a type 20, sir? Yeah, I think we've upgraded to so 21 now. So it's it's 20 mm -hmm. on there, but I added one more. I'll get that to you. So it's 21 now because I put a journal entry in there. My only question for the adjusting entry part is, do we have to acknowledge the leftover 5,000 for the 100 customers, or is that something we do on the T accounts as opposed to the journal entry? Well, how would the T account look? Say it again, sir? How would the T account look? It would still be out of balance if, I'm, if I don't acknowledge the 5,000 still. Okay, so. We have this account, unearned income. And we put 50,000 in it. So that we'll put our cash account over here. We got $50,000.
So if you're running a business and you get $50,000, how do you feel? I want you to feel. Okay, so once these customers come and get their item, we're going to make this adjusting entry debiting unearned account. 45 comma zero 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 and we're gonna credit sales for fifty thousand. Okay, so we now have wait a minute, excuse me. So we're gonna credit sales for forty five thousand, excuse me. So the balance now in the earner and account. Guess what? That's the balance. So you bring up a good question, Daniel. Is our trial balance in balance? If you did a trial balance, would you be in balance? So then would I have to write that same entry 5,000 balance on the journal entry as well, sir, that you wrote on the T account? What 5,000? That's the balance? No. That's just what's in. You've, you've, you've made two journal entries, okay? You've made two journal entries. We posted those to the ledger. And my question to you is your trial balance and balance. Is it in balance, Brooke? Is the trial balance right? Balance. No. What am I looking at? I told you to do a trial balance. It's an imbalance. Would you just make a? Oh, what? Would you just make another one for adjusting? Well, I'm gonna just do a trial balance in cash as a debit balance of fifty thousand. The unearned account. has a credit balance of 5,000. Sales has a credit balance of 45,000. Is the trial balance in balance? That's the question. No. I say you. Yeah. Because 45 and 5 is 50, and then the cash is 50. Right? Yeah, I think it's in balance. So, no, you don't have to do anything else, Daniel. It's all these journal entries have done everything that you need. But on the, on the journal entry part, do we have to do it by dates as well? But, like, on the, like, as after our numbers? Or like, do we have to? Yeah, we were. We had. We weren't worried about the dates. We we're in the same. You don't have to worry about that. But all we're saying is, at the end of the year, if these go all your transactions, you'd have fifty thousand in the bank. You'd have performed forty-five thousand in services, and five thousand people would still be waiting for the games. So, you know, you, people paid you and they didn't come get the game. That's what happened. You still got the money. So right now for, for what we for what we know and for what you're teaching us, we just have to identify the balance in the T account for right now. That's all you're doing all the time. When GameStop sells this way, 
There are always going to be people who don't come pick up the game. Does the game start go hunt the people down and give them their money back? Does GameStop have a person who just runs around giving money to people who don't pick up their games, you think? No. I would assume not. No, they just keep the money. So that's why I tell you this is a good business to be in when you get your money in advance. And so if the people don't pick up their games, you just keep the money. So nothing else is required. You got 50,000 in the bank. You've earned 45 of it, but you still got 50,000 in the bank. 5,000 are just owed to people who, you know, they don't show up. They, they may leave the, the country. They may leave the state, but you know they may become ill. They may pass away, but this happens all the time. Okay. Are there any questions? So we got a one in the Daniel column there. Let's move on to 23, Miss Ellis. Okay. Um what I did, uh what was I did? I credited cash for a hundred thousand. Oh wait. Why did you credit cash for a hundred thousand? Because. Yeah, tell the people what you did. They they have um, work. So what I did was I did two thousand times fifty. Because do I need to read the question or? Yeah, you might. They might not have read it, you know. <laughs> Okay, it says, assume JHJ GameStop in 2017 receives 2,000 customers for $50 for NBA 2K18. At December 31st, 1,500 customers have picked up their games. Record the entry to record the receipt of the $50 from 2,000 customers. Then make the journal just entry for the delivery of 100, 1,500 games to customers. So... I credited cash for 100000 because I did 2000 times you 50. credit cash or debit cash? I credited cash. I well, probably should have debited it. So I should have debited cash and credited the unearned income? Say it again. So I should have debited cash for 100000 Mm-hmm. And credited unearned income for 100000 Mm-hmm. Which is a type four. And then for the uh, adjusting journal entries, I credited owner income. No, I debited owner income for seventy five thousand, and I got seventy five thousand because I did one thousand five hundred times fifty. And I got seventy five thousand. Because then... fifty thousand, the customers pick it up. Okay, all right. <laughs> for... Huh? Okay, go ahead. You're doing good now. Okay, and then for sales, I credited sales for 7500 And it was a type 21. 7500 or 7500 7, Are there any questions? No. I gotta take a break for a second, I'll be right back. I wish there was a clapping button on this to give you a round of applause. <laughs> like we're I'm doing the only good person, so am I the only person that's confused <laughs> still? Like, I'm yeah, like this. I'm, I'm very lost. I'm <laughs> like, and then I'm like the next person to go. You're not the only one who's confused. Like, he has like no mercy. So it's like, I don't want mm -hmm. to get uh, my question and. 
I just hope my answer isn't wrong. Other than that, y'all good today? Okay. We're going to do it one more time. And everybody should get this right on the quiz on Thursday. How much money you had left over? Ellis? Oh, 100,000. That's how much, you, yeah. And how many people hadn't picked up? How much money you had extra since they didn't pick it up? 500 people didn't pick up. Okay, German? Hello. Hello. Okay, so for number 24, um I debited $75,000 or no 75 yeah, $75,000 in um cash and I credited um $75,000 in sales and I put it was a type 2. Uh-oh. Dang. What a no. type two. Wait, um, give me a second. Give me a second, because now I'm confused. I'm seen, gotten together, met, and worked and everything. Give me a they second. Were, they were doing so well. Mm. They were doing so well. It's just talk to cash revenue, right? Was it incorrect the first time you said it? Is it correct the second time? Okay, so give me a second then. Mm -hmm. Have you been sleep? Dang. Have you been sleep? No, I'm at work. Oh, uh, why are you gonna yeah. do? How are you going to do when we, we start meet back? You heard your team here. You can cause them to lose the point. You weren't watching what they were doing with the other ones? I was, but I really wasn't understanding it. Well, I better get you back in the classroom then so you, so you can understand better. Okay. You agree with that? Yeah. So you can't so be wrong. taking accounting. I mean, you may be able to do some things, some classes that way, but you need to be at your computer working and not hurting your team. They had two points and now they got a minus one. I'm gonna take off another point if you don't hurry up because you're wasting our time. You're gonna have about a minus two. Somebody better help us. You were just talking because I didn't know what Mr. Boy. I don't think it's that yeah, serious. You you getting a little, you know, getting a little. Mm. Yeah. I mean, you were just, just talking. Now, I don't know. Yeah, you said I was wrong, so I didn't know what else you wanted to do because I only have what I put on my little paper. And if it's wrong, I mean, I don't know how I'm wrong. Can you? Explain how I'm wrong or right on the team explain just, why wrong. she's wrong. Well basically that that problem is the same as the other one. So it'd still be a type four. So it's a type four mm -hmm. and thank you, Lisa. So yes, sir. So I think and it's the, next the same math. Yeah, yeah, I think you probably you should still be right. So you still cash seventy-five thousand debit, right? Mm-hmm. 
and then sales seventy five thousand credited, right? Wrong. Unearned income. Was it? Um. Yeah. This question. Yeah, we better get back to campus. Okay. Work is going to do. I mean, at work, class not working. I'm going to suggest, given that we're coming up to midterm, and you'll see this on midterm, that you know you might want to stop working for a little while. Okay, now we, so that's the preceding entry. What's the adjusting entry going to be? Somebody help her? Would the adjusting entry be unearned revenue? You debit unearned revenue for 60000 and you would. How'd you get 60000 I did, I think it was. What was the twelve hundred? Fifty times twelve hundred or fifteen hundred, and then yeah, twelve hundred. I did twelve hundred times fifty. I got sixty thousand, and then I credited sixty thousand for sales. Okay, so we did it three times. Okay, so we did that three times. This is the easiest one. You debit cash and credit unearned income. Then you debit unearned income and credit sales. The interest stays the same. You just gotta get the correct dollar amount. All right, so let's see how I'm doing. So the next type of entry we look at, you know, involves supplies. And I think everybody knows what supplies are, correct? You buy these, you buy these supplies and you make an entry to record the supplies. When the supplies are used up, when the supplies are used up, you got to make an adjusting entry because you no longer have supplies. So, Trey, can you handle this first and for us? Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, purchase supplies on account. Um, that's the type you? 12. Okay, so tell us what happened. Um, a debit supply is twenty five thousand, and um, credited accounts payable twenty five thousand. Okay, for and then account. yes. So you bought twenty five thousand dollars worth of supplies. And then what happened? And um, I had five thousand left, so 5, I uh, I, huh? Okay, go ahead. So that means um, well, five thousand left of the supplies at the end of the year, so meaning I used twenty thousand. Very good. Very good. Is that correct? So what's our adjusting entry going to be? My adjusting entry is going to be, that's where I got mixed up at. But 
Would it be supplies? Would it be supplies? And then um, cash? Cash? What did we say last time about cash and adjusting interest? What did it won't we ever be there. Cash adjusting interest, bro. I'll take that, I'll take that one back. But would it be supplies first? Are y'all messing up? I'm trying to mess up good. <laughs> would, it be, would it be supplies and supplies expenses, sir? As the adjusting interest? Say what, Daniel? Would it be supplies and supplies expenses as the as the adjusting journal entry, sir? Those are the accounts. So give me the entry. Supplies expense for 20000 Supplies for 20000 well, nope. no supplies expense, and then you're gonna debit it for twenty thousand, and then put supplies and credit it for twenty thousand. Yeah. Or no. Don't piss me out, but yes or no. Test, test today, so far, you know, for your new job. Huh? You passed the test for your new job. Oh, ha, 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 ha. You're funny. Okay, so we have the supplies account. And we bought $25,000 worth of supplies. Then we make the AJE for $20,000 because we got five left. So if we got five left, we got to spend 20, I use 20. And so this is going to leave a balance of 5,000. Now let's look at on the uh, ex expense side. So when we post that AG, what's going to happen here? We have a debit in here of what? 20,000. Now, at the end of the year, what's going to happen? Two things going to happen. The 5,000 in supplies are going to roll over to 2018. So we're going to have a beginning balance. But what's going to happen with the supplies expense? Is that going to roll over? No. No. Why not? It's an expense. We can use it. We just spent it. A closing entry is going to be made. So it's going to be closed out. <laughs> okay. So, Brooke, are you ready for 2018 now? Yeah. Okay. Elucidate. What? <laughs> Explain. Oh, um, I did supplies and cash. Tell us what's going on. Yeah, tell us what's going on there. Oh, okay. Um, a car company purchased paying cash in the amount of fifteen thousand. So I did supplies. Wait a minute. Did I do that? Mm -mm. Cash and supplies. And for 15000 an additional 20000 right. on account. So I did supplies and account of payable for 20000 And then for my uh, adjusting entry, I did supplies expense and supplies. Thirty thousand. 
Mm -hmm. You have different numbers. Wait a minute, I'm on, I'm on two, okay. Okay, now. Yeah. Because mine is a mix for number one and number. Yeah, you're two. I was I gone down to four. So you purchased how many supplies paying cash? I and purchased supplies paying cash of fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. Cash and supplies. Fifteen thousand. Uh, supplies and cash. Supplies and cash. That's what I got. Mm hmm It is. And, and then 15, I did, yeah, okay. fifteen thousand. And then I did supplies and accounts payable because my extra twenty thousand. And I did supplies accounts payable, debit supplies for twenty thousand, accounts payable credit for twenty thousand. And what are those types? Um, a seven and a twelve. So let's go and post those next. So we're going to post those to the T account for 2018. So what's going to come in here? The 15,000 and the 20,000. 15,000 and the 20,000. So at this point, how much do you have in the account? 40,000. You got 40,000 in the account. Can you go back up to the journal entries there, please? Okay, here's the journal entry. Here they are here. So what's the AJE gonna be, Brooke? Um, I did supplies expense and supplies for thirty thousand. Supplies expense, I debit it for thirty thousand, and then supplies I credit it for thirty thousand. How did you get thirty thousand? Uh, we have forty thousand in supplies. So at the end of the year, we have ten thousand left over. Forty thousand minus ten thousand equals thirty thousand. So the balance in the account is ten thousand. Yes. So the AJE amount has to be that difference between the forty and the ten or thirty thousand. So we'd eventually debit the expense. So are there any questions? Yeah, I didn't understand that last part at all, sir. So just chill for like two minutes while I copy all this down, please. Explain it to him, Brooke. He doesn't understand it. Well, before anyone starts talking, let me copy this down first. Copy? You can't take a picture of it? If I do that, so you keep talking, I fall more behind. So just just wait a solid minute. That's all I need. Sixty seconds, please. Just my grades, it. my grades determine my house. Where rest my head at night. So just relax, please. Okay. I, sir, that same thing happens to me every day. <laughs> every day. Yes. You literally teach too fast every and too slow day. at the same time. No, I get it. Your classes give me anxiety. Real bad anxiety. <laughs> well, maybe you're learning something, you know, maybe maybe that's what all your classes should be doing. The more exact exam you have, the more you'd be learning. So what I was assuming, I sent these sheets to you, correct? 
Yes, sir. Okay. So since I sent them to you, I assume that you'd have them out and open. And so on this, so I guess I was talking, but all of this was was there. I thought, but anyway. And then, can we talk about the last part of the of the question, please? Okay, what's the last part? Do you understand the first part? Twenty seventeen. Does everybody understand the year 2017? Anybody don't? See, I'm trying to slow down, but y'all don't say anything. Can you re-explain it, please? Okay, thank you for letting me know. So let's go back to 2017 and to, to 2017 which is one and in one in 2017 so you know these are separate years we purchased 25,000 in supplies we had 5,000 left so if you had 25,000 in the bank at the beginning of the month and 5,000 at the end how much did you spend 20,000 okay so therefore the first entry we make is to buy the supplies. Debit supplies, credit accounts payable, 25,000, 25,000. So, and we're just looking at 2017, we got 25,000 in the account of what we purchased, but there's only five in there now, so we spent 20,000. So we make an adjusting entry to everything supplies expense and crediting supplies with 20,000. Because we no longer have 25,000 in supplies, we have 5,000. And so we make an entry debiting supplies expense and crediting supplies. Okay. So this is the way the year stands now. Before we make closing in, we have 5,000 in supplies and 20,000 in supplies expense. But we know all the expenses are closed out. So when we get ready to go to 2018, the supplies expense is closed out. And the 5,000, just like the 5,000 that's in your account on December 31st, is going to be in there on January 1st also. So whatever you end with on the last day of the month is the beginning. Does everybody cash account work like the bank account work like that? What they have on December 31st becomes the amount on January 1st. Is that true for everybody's bank account? Yes. Okay. Now we get to 2018, the next year. We buy supplies of 15,000 and we buy supplies of 20,000. So we make two more purchases of supplies. So we not only have our 5,000 beginning balance, but we have 15 and 20. If you have 5,000 in the bank and you put 15,000 in there and 20,000 in there, you now have 40,000. Does that make sense? If you have 5,000 at the beginning of 2018, then you put 15 and 20 in there, you now have 40,000. Any questions on that? How we get to 40,000? And this coming from number three? Number two. Number two, okay, thank you. Okay, we just on number two. Now, at the end of 2017, the second year, 
we determined that we only got 10,000 in there. So we had 40 in there in 2018, but only 10 now. How much did we spend? 30,000. 30,000, the difference. So you're always looking at the difference. So the adjusting entry is we debit supplies and we credit supplies expense. Now notice in these preceding entries, we'll have cash. Eventually we're gonna to have to pay the account payable. But when we make the adjusting entry, there is a income statement account supplies expense and a balance sheet account supplies. Are there any questions? Are there any questions? You said for the supplies and the supplies expense, you got out to 30,000, correct? We said that we had 40,000 in supplies, okay? That's what's in there. For the the journal the journal entry sure not the not the T accounts. I'm still trying to understand how you get to thirty. Say so what now? I'm still trying to figure out the second part of the question. <laughs> so, how do we so get just, thirty? Just just rest for like sixty seconds while I read the question and read the journal entry. I'm trying to flip through all my my screens here and it's taking more time than I would like it to. Okay, go ahead. Let me know when you're ready. So we have to have uh, two separate adjusting entries, sir? They're two different years. There's an adjusting entry in 2017. Then we went to 2018, another adjusting entries. So the entries are made each year. That's a good point. In 2017, some things happened, adjusting entry. In 2018, some things happened, and adjusting entry for 2018. So that's why these years are there. 2017, and then we have 2018. So every year an adjusting entry is made. And so then at the end of 2018, the supplies and supplies expenses equaled out to 30,000 because of the, because you told everything up or? In 2018, we began with 5,000. We purchased 15 and 20. So we got 40,000 of what we had in our account. So think of this as a bank account. You had 5,000 at the beginning of the year. You deposited 15,000, you deposited 20,000. So in your account was 40,000. But when you check your balance, there's only $10,000. How much money did you spend? If that's your bank account. Thirty thousand. Thirty thousand. So once again, you begin with five thousand dollars. You add fifteen and twenty thousand to your account, so you have forty thousand in there that was available to spend. Your ending balance is five thousand. So how much money did you have to spend? always the difference. Mm -hmm. 
Are there any questions? I have a question. So I know we're doing like going over these in class, it's like for a grade in a sense. Are we still submitting them in Blackboard? And if we are, are we putting them together for the team or are we just submitting one? We're not submitting them in Blackboard. Okay. So if if fifteen thousand plus twenty thousand equals thirty-five thousand, and then you add the beginning balance of five thousand to get us forty thousand. Correct. And then it just and then it tells us that we have ten thousand like on hand left, and so that's just what we Right, that's what we use. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so it's more like working backwards than anything. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay, so what we'll do on three and four, the B and C students will do three and the A students are gonna do four. Get to work. Professor Boyd. Yes. So if you assign us that number and you tell them like the A students to do like that certain person's number, are they is that person gonna get that point? Yes, they are. But so I'm assigned number four, so I'm not gonna get my point. Well, you're gonna work it and tell me what the answer is. I just want everybody else to work it too. Okay. But you answer. But I want to, you just heard people say we were moving too fast. So the way to slow it down is rather than we just start on one, we let everybody try to work on it. And then you answer, would that work out? I mean, that's fine. Oh, okay, I'm glad that's fine. Slow it down. I have to try to accommodate everybody. So just to go and go work another one now. Yep. Mm -hmm. That won't help us get where we need to be. So I'm going to just take these numbers out. So explain. I have a question. Yes. Yeah, for 16, it says, um, I'm just asking about the question, I like how to do it. It just says, uh, company purchases on January 1st, 17, eight autos for 30,000, each paying 50,000. I'm confused on the question itself. Have we bought autos before? Huh? And we bought autos and equipment before and land? Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, how do you pay? Because it's eight autos for thirty thousand. He's paying fifty thousand. Pay fifty down, I think. Didn't say that. I'll get to it in just a second. No. Okay. Let's just say which one was it. Which one did you say you were saying? 16? I was on number 17, but number 17 had to do with 16. So if I'm asking, yes, 16. Then you bought eight autos for 30,000 each, paying 50,000 down. So that should be the word down. Uh, so that was left out. Thank you for that. So they paid 50,000 down. Mm -hmm. Thank you for noticing that for us. 
I do the cam. So how's everybody coming on working three and four? So everybody has to do three and four, or I thought it was just the ace doing number four and then B and C doing three, or is that wrong? That's correct. I was just asking how you, so you got three done tickets? I think so. I don't know if it's right, but um, I can't tell you what I got. Well, uh, we got to give that to the person who has three. Oh. But if she doesn't, we'll let you do it. Harvey, is you, are you here, Harvey? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, so don't let her take your points. <laughs> so tell us about number three. Okay, so for number three, uh, and like I put for supplies, I debited fifteen thousand, and accounts payable, I credited fifteen thousand, and that's type twelve. Okay. And then what happened? Then, uh, for supplies expense, I put I debited ten thousand dollars, and. And then for supplies, I credited ten thousand dollars. Okay, was that hard? No, I mean no, sir. <laughs> so let's go and put that in our T accounts. So you be okay. Bob, okay. how much? And for fifteen thousand. For the T, yeah, fifteen thousand on the debit side, and then on the credit side is ten thousand. And then I would have five thousand remaining as my remaining balance. Oh boy, this team is heating up now. And then for supplies expense, my adjusting journal entry would be ten thousand dollars. Ten thousand. And we know that that's gonna close out at the end of the year. Mm hmm. <laughs> what type of uh, a transaction is the adjust entry for number three? Is it 12 and what's the next one? The AJD 13. 13. 13. Thank you. That's a type 13. Any questions? Why is it a type 13? Okay, we're moving into all of the types now. Okay. So 12 says, first of an asset utilizing debt, 13 utilization of an asset with a transfer to the expense adjusting entry so 13 is an adjusting entry for those of you who got who who asked me about uh those autos that were bought recording appreciation that's 14. so that's that's where you get the adjusting entry there in terms of the accounts so we now begin to look at all of these. Okay, so Joseph, are you ready? I'm ready. Got a good name there. <laughs> you want me to read the problem? Yeah, why do you want to go so fast? Oh, oh okay. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
In 2018, JHJ Shoe Company purchased supplies paying cash in the amount of $5,000 and purchased an additional $10,000 in supplies on account. At the end of the year, the supplies on hand total $4,000. Okay. So let's record uh -huh. the purchase of the supplies for cash. What type is that? Uh, type 7. Okay, so that's a type 7. We purchased $10,000 in supplies paying cash. And what else did we do? Uh, we purchased 5000 in cash. Oh, thank, thank you. 5000 in cash. Then what? And then we purchased 10,000 supplies on account. So that's a type 12. Okay. So how much is in our account now? Can we go uh, 15,000, wait, in account? Yeah, in the account. That's 15,000, right? Yeah, that's 15, but you had five in there at the start of the period. Then you have the five and 10 that you purchased. You didn't give away those supplies, did you? No. I don't think so. All right. So your balance in your account is 40000 before we make the adjusting entry. Now it says the ending balance is how much? Uh, 4,000. 4,000. So what's your adjusting entry gonna be? Um, supply of expense is gonna be 36,000. That's right. Do we put the runner mouse down? Is it that five, right? It was five and ten. Were those their amounts? Yeah. So we add those up. How much is that? Five and five and ten? Yeah, that's twenty thousand. That's twenty thousand. Okay. Oh. So what's our adjusting entry gonna be? Uh Supply the expense for sixteen thousand and a type thirteen. Is that right? Sounds good to me. So we're signing everybody one. So you work one, you get to know that one. They're not that difficult as you can see with what we work with today. But the the amount for the adjusting entry is not given to you. You got to calculate that. So that is the difference. You got to calculate something. The journal entries stayed the same. We bought the supplies, we recorded the expense. When we were doing the earn earned income, it's the same thing and it's gonna be that way when we do uh, prepaid insurance next time. Same entries. When we do the accumulate depreciation and purchase equipment, standard interest. When we did the unearned income, there were standard interest. We have the cash, we had the earned standard interest. We just got to calculate the amount. Mr. Boyd. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay, when it talks about insurance, are we automatically going to say that it's going to be a 12-month plan for prepaid insurance? 
it? Tip is 12 months, yeah. So you look at what it says, but typically we're working with 12 months. Okay, even if it doesn't say it though, right? Yeah, if it doesn't say it, assume 12 months. Okay. Are there any other questions? Mine's not related to what we like learned today. Mine's really about my grade, so. That's not right now, that's after the class. No, yeah, yeah after, after class for sure. Okay, thank you. Are there any questions? Are there any questions about what we covered today? Are we feeling that we can get this done now? No. No, not for my no, need more practice. You say y'all can? No. Not, no. Not no. We still confused. Okay. Well, are we going to have no. all of this done? No. Like, no. Different situation. So we said that we were working on it today. Then we're working on it on Thursday. Then we're working on it on Tuesday. Gotcha. We'll go as far as we get each time okay but only what we work on this week only what we work on this week will be on the midterm when is the midterm i think it's next thursday i believe is everybody going to have like the same midterm or it's going to be different for different grades it's going to be different okay good Oh, she says, she says, it's good. This is the boy. Yes, ma'am. In Blackboard, it says the assignment is due on Thursday. Are you going to take that down or do we have to turn something in? Because I thought we'd have to turn it in. You don't have to turn it in. I just have it in there in terms of uh, okay. if when we'd be finishing it up, but we're adjusting that. So. Okay. Okay, so it's not an assignment. I'm grading it as you all talk. Okay. 